I've been waiting for you my entire life. I just got the Flywoo Explorer, but this one has the DJI O3 air unit in it. So let's take a look. You know, your box might be different. I don't know if they'll always give the same gifts, but I got a Kevlar battery strap here. This is a gift as well. This is the new adapter for the O3 air unit. Maybe for other quads, it looks like there's 25 by 25. 20 by 20 holes so you could play around with this if you want to adapt the O3 air unit to the other quads. It comes with two more battery straps. I really like these to hold the 3000 mAh Lion battery, it really helps. It comes with these arm bracers that you can attach under the motors and you're gonna have to use longer screws. It supposedly adds more stability but you know it adds a little bit of weight if you care about that. And it comes with looks like nice two sets of props here this hardware kit, a customer service card, and a nice sticker. All right, let's have a look at this quad now. Wow, look at this. What's in here, if you guys don't know what an Air Unit 03 is, essentially it replaces the action camera. The, the unfortunate thing about it is it can't record sound, but for this type of quad, you don't want to really listen to it because the motors don't sound very cool. But for like, my five inch quads, like those sound really cool. They sound like, like F1 motors or something, you know, of quads. But this one, you know, you just want to enjoy the scenery and just put some nice music to go along with it. So I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But supposedly you can go five to 10 kilometers. I highly doubt I can make it that far without getting crazy nervous and a heart attack. But, you know, having that capability is already a big deal to me. So essentially, uh, what I think is this same camera in here is actually now in here. So it kind of same color and everything kind of resembles the DJI Action 2, but now it's your goggle camera. So that's really amazing. So I got the PNP model, DJI Plug and Play. I don't know why it still comes with this big honking wire here. The new FC here already has a plug that goes in and this also acts as the receiver. So I don't know why they include this. I thought it'd just be gone, but apparently like maybe I do want to put crossfire, etc., etc. I could uh, probably hack this off and s solder on my own receiver. Let's uh, straighten this out, you know, no one likes crooked dongles. Okay. Dongle, dongle, dongle. Uh, looks like they had to make some changes with the length of the plate. The O3 air unit, the camera doesn't stick out as much. It looks like they had to redesign the camera mount and it looks like it's 3D printed now. Using the stabilization feature, apparently it's very sensitive to vibrations. You can see the old explorers using metal. TPU 3D print is a little softer. You know, this is still very, very rigid, I would say. It looks very protected. It looks like a wall still cannot hit it. You see that gap? So, you know, they did a pretty good job in protecting the camera here. You can actually um, put on DJI Avada ND filters on it. So it looks like they have one millimeter room on each side, which is perfect because that means it'll fit. And let's do a test right now because I have the ND filters with me. And how these go on is you see there's uh, on the camera, there's these like nubs at the top and the bottom. And this, this essentially just snaps on. Sorry, the autofocus is not very good with this camera. So, whoop. Okay, it's on there. It goes on fine. And the camera will go up and down and the, the ND filter will stay on. So if you guys don't know anything about the Explorer, why, why this quad is so impressive is for what you get, it already comes with everything you need to go exploring, essentially. So it comes with a GPS unit, and this is like a uh, version three unit. So this is the latest and greatest. And apparently it can get almost 30 satellite locks. And it comes with a buzzer, so you could find it. Maybe you lost it in a bush somewhere, like a kilometer away, and then you want to hike and find it, and your, your battery that you put on it ran out. This actually has an internal battery that will just keep going beep, beep. I think this quad looks so badass because it's now it's all black. Flywoo's really good at their like quality and you know the way they do things. It's very neat and you know cute in a way I would say. Only thing about Flywoo products I don't really understand is why they use these kind of bolts. Like, is it because 
um, these, sorry, what are these called? Cylinder? They're not button head, right? Button head's a little more flush, so it doesn't damage your battery. Um, but these ones they use, it's like a cylinder and it sticks out more. I mean, I would think it's more durable in a crash, but you see like, even with this battery sticky pad they have, just my feedback, right? You know, it's been poking through the plastic here. You can see it's a little damaged. All right, so now let's plug her in and just uh, see what she looks like in beta flight. So because I'm using this to fly the quad, I have to set it up and this is my first time doing it and I just completed it. It's actually not that hard. It is literally plug and play. I was going to remove um, that huge dongle wire that goes to your choice of receiver. I just tucked it up on that non-conductive plate up there. I just folded it a few times and just tucked it there. So AUX4 is this start stop button right here. See when you push it, you can see it it turned on, it's armed, and then when I press it again, it's off. For angle mode, I like to have it on the rocker switch, aux one, but I guess it's this one. Even if you click it up medium, it's angle mode, and if you click it all the way, it's angle mode and beeper. So you see if I click it up, it's beeping and angle mode. So I'll show you again. Middle, it's angle mode, so it's level, and then when you click it all the way, beeper. Okay, and I have a black box set to arm because um, I just want to check out their tune and, and the vibrations in the frame. So, so whenever I hit arm, it's just going to start logging. But you know, th there's 16 megabytes of memory allowed on this FC. That's good enough for maybe like 10 minutes of black box logging. On AUX2, Aux 2 apparently is, is this switch right here, right, this toggle. So um, for, for the middle, you see how it goes to the middle? I have it um, set to uh, GPS beep satellite count. So whenever it has five or more satellites and it's actually ready to go, if you put it to the middle, it will beep the satellite count. That means the GPS is working and the return home will work. If I toggle this, all the way, it'll have turtle mode, turtle mode activated. So if my quad's upside down, and then I can uh, turn on turtle mode and just roll it a little bit, it will flip over. Let's see, and then one important one I just missed here, uh, AUX3, this switch right here. I'm just setting this up according to what my DJI FPV did, basically. So this is the return home. Obviously this quad's not gonna land by itself and stuff, but this is AUX3, so you can, you see? So I turn it off, I can turn it back on, turn it off, and then if you're in trouble, press it and it'll be on. Obviously you need satellite lock. I'll be using the M2x7 screws to mount these bracers. I believe these, these bracers really work. They add extra stability to this lightweight quad. When you're flying and with these thinner arms and in the wind you can imagine the arms could be flexing and it just adds more vibrations while you're flying right and something like this you want it to be as stable as possible so if they give you these why not just throw them on really like this is still somewhat of a sub 250g quad i mean who's really judging you if you've added some weight and you went over 250 g's it's just my opinion um i mean if you're like 260 G and you're flying, like, are you gonna get arrested? I, you know, I, I got no idea. Is someone, is police gonna show up with a gram scale? Just put these suckers on. Two by seven works well for the props too. Seems like the perfect length. This is a props out quad, so basically the blunt side is gonna be swinging like this. For the one in the back, it'll be swinging out like this. Pop it on there, put the screws through, and then just turn it slightly until you hear the screws set in to the holes. And then I'm just gonna tighten one side and tighten the other. So let's weigh it up. Keep in mind this has two straps, you could use one, and it also has an ND filter. So 180 grams with the bracers, 
These would be the batteries I would use for it. So actually, I usually fly with these two. This one is a GNB 1100 HB battery. This is relatively light for what it is. And this will give you about six to seven minutes of flight time. Ooh, over 271G. Yeah, you can probably get away with that. Now let's try some smaller batteries. So these are not too light, but this is like a tattoo battery. Let's say 850 ma. This will probably give like maybe six minutes of flight time. 275G. But this one has more discharge rate. This is good for freestyle. This is good for cruising. So definitely, um, if you want, you know, more performance, probably use this, but usually this is more of a cruiser, so stick with that. This one maybe give you four minutes of flight time. So this is uh, LIHV as well, 720 by GNB. These are the lightest batteries that I can find so far. So let's just put that on there. Oh wow, okay, so this is sub 250G. Four to five minutes of flight time possibly, and you'll be sub 250G. And let's put on my favorite battery. You can cruise for probably 25 minutes, but you definitely want to make sure you land at 25 minutes because that's when it's almost, that's pretty much like dead. Apparently you can hover the quad for 30 minutes with this, but who the heck's gonna hover? Are you gonna be staring at someone's bathroom window in acro mode for 30 minutes? I don't think so. This thing is 199 grams, so let's just put that on there. 379G, yep, it's definitely overweight. Let's compare this with the other Explorer with the DJI Action 2 and mounts. So right away it's 253 grams. And let's put this honking battery on it, on top of it. Okay. 452.7 grams. So that's how much weight it's carrying. Man, this one's gonna fly so much better. And have 4K DVR, yes. All right, so it's early morning. I'm at this huge field. The day doesn't look so bad today. I mean, it's kind of cloudy, a little bit of blue skies. Okay, so I'm just gonna connect the LiPo and see how fast it is to satellite lock. I mean, it's the first time that I'm satellite locking, so it might be, it might take longer than usual because you gotta like break it in kind of thing. But you know, this is like a new generation GPS, so hopefully it'll be really quick. Oh, that was really quick actually. I got seven satellites already and I basically just popped the new battery into my camera and right away I got seven satellites and I'm just like, that is crazy fast. So that's pretty impressive. Um, let me just uh, test my GPS buzzer here. There you go, it counts satellites. All right. Well, she's moving. Wow, this is a really beautiful view. I mean, I'm using goggles V2, but it's still quite amazing because it, now it's, what is it? Is it 810p now? So, pretty amazing actually. This looks way better than the Vista. Wow, this is so good. I can't imagine what the OLED screens would look like. Let's try, um. GPS return home. Maybe I'll, I'll bring it over here. Oh yeah, it works. Look at that, I'm just leaving it on right now. It's coming back and it's just, it found me and basically just hovers over me. And I turned it off and just took control again. Everything works like a charm. So since the black box is on, let's do some rolls. Very responsive. Whoa. Drop pretty fast. Let's try some. Whoa. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this uh, transmitter. Like I said, I'm used to the resolution of my Tango, so kind of weird to fly using this DJI remote again. It has like tiny gimbals. Try some uh, prop wash inducing stuff. And it'll fall into our wake. Oh, it's got some prop wash. But yeah, it's got prop wash. 
But you know, this is not a crazy performance quad, so it's more for cruising, like stuff like this, just like nice and smooth. And we got like, can't wait to see the footage. flies really well. I was a little worried when I saw the PID loop is at 2K and it's got bi-directional D-shot on and it and also the magnets are set at 14 but the magnets on these motors are there's only 12 so I was just curious how does this work but it's actually very very smooth. Yeah it's not bad. I'm guessing they wanted to keep the CPU load uh, under 30% that's why they had to keep the PID loop at 2K. The, the PID loop can is also able to go 8K, but I think the CPU would like be overloaded and start lagging. So I think I scared some birds away. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Let me just keep, look at my battery. I'm not used to this OSD. All right. So yeah, everything's good. One thing about this quad is the diving ability. Sometimes when you dive like down a mountain or something, it'll like slightly desync because of the like, I don't know if it's the weight or the motor's just overloaded, it can't take it. So I'm just gonna give it a try. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like shaking a little bit left and right. It really, really doesn't like it, so. Not really for diving. Stabilization might get rid of it a little bit, but you know, let's try that again. Climbs quite quickly though. The motors are. You know, this is the factory tune from Flywoo. I, you know, I don't like keeping things stock. You know, obviously manufacturers have to tune things to be um, suitable for everybody. After looking at the black box log and stuff, I think I can push this a little bit. Such a smooth flyer. I wish it could be more aggressive. But you know, it can. You know, let's, let's uh, just before we kill the battery, why don't we do a crazy power loop? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Let me try one more for fun. <laughs> All right. We could do some fun tricks. Let's fly it behind a school. This is gonna be like multiple layers of, I'm just gonna go really slow so I can disarm. But wow, my HD transmission is at three. Focus mode has not okay, there's a little bit of focus. Okay, it doesn't like it too much but the bars are, okay, it's at two. Okay, so I'm really pushing the limits here. I'm just gonna go up a little bit and go back over. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look at all the layers it just went through. It just went through like a couple rooms. Uh, I went down to two bars out of four, so half. Pretty good penetration. There we are. Flywoo recommended some settings on their website. As you can see, the previous footage I used ultra wide mode, and it's still, you know, at sharp turns, you can see it captures some of the 3D print or like the edges of the frame. For this test, I, I used wide setting, and I also turned off rock steady, and instead uh, post process the stabilization with gyro flow. And without rock steady, it's actually shaking quite a bit in the wind. But after with gyro flow, it got rid of like 90% of those shakes. I've owned around four of these now, so I'm pretty comfortable in tuning them. So 
So I'm going to see what else I can do to improve the quad so I don't have to rely on gyro flow completely. This quad is so perfect for this type of purpose of just scoping out the area before you take out the badass like seven inch or you know just seeing what's possible just seeing what's out there and that's why I love this thing so much it's so quiet it's friendly it's not intimidating to use I think everyone should have one and if you found the video helpful at all please like and subscribe the channel if you have any questions or comments please fire it away please visit the affiliate links below if you want to purchase one it helps me out a little bit so I could keep bringing this type of content to you guys and I'll see you on the next one.